kids. K A R S, cards for kids. 1877 cards for kids. Donate your card today. 1877 cards for kids. K A R S, cards for kids. 1877 cards for kids. Donate your car today. To learn more about our programs and to donate, go to carsforkids.com. That's cars with a K. Pickup is quick and easy. You'll also get a vacation voucher and maximum tax deduction. 1877 cars for kids. K A R S, cars for kids. 1877 cars for kids. Cars for kids. Donate your car today. Also accepting boats, motorcycles, RVs, and real estate donations. From Washington, D.C., this is Westwood One Daily News for Monday, August 3rd, 2020. I'm John Trout. There's been over 157,000 deaths attributed to COVID-19. A top coronavirus advisor to President Trump is warning that the disease is quickly spreading to places that might otherwise have felt immune. Bob Costantini has our top story. The United States has 4.6 million coronavirus cases total now, according to Johns Hopkins, a number rising by nearly 2 million in July alone. Coordinator of the President's Coronavirus Task Force, Dr. Deborah Burks on CNN State of the Union, suggesting no place should feel safe. What we're seeing today is different from March and April. It is extraordinarily widespread. It's into the rural as equal urban areas. Burks even went so far as to suggest younger people living in the same household as elderly or anyone more vulnerable should wear masks inside. The disease is falling hard on states where governors have been resistant to putting in restrictions. Even now, Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson tells CNN State of the Union he's going about as far as he thinks is necessary to slow the spread. Our bars and restaurants are at at a limited capacity, and so restaurants are at two-thirds capacity. Bars are similar. Hutchinson did not issue a statewide mask in public places order until July 20th. Like Arkansas, down in Texas and over in Florida, most Republican governors only coming around to the idea of pushing mask wearing once President Trump started promoting it. In Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis still leaving it up to individual counties and cities. Bob Costantini, Washington. Negotiators spent the weekend trying to reach a deal on a coronavirus stimulus plan as crucial benefits have already expired. Correspondent Linda Kenyon has that story. Negotiations resumed today after weekend talks between top congressional Democrats and the White House. One of the biggest issues, but not the only one, is an extension of the $600 a week unemployment enhancement. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin on ABC's This Week echoes what many Republicans have been saying, that the bonus has been a disincentive for people to go back to work. There's no question in certain cases where we're paying people more to work, stay home than to work, that's created issues in the entire economy. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tells ABC's This Week the $600 bonus has been keeping the entire economy going. We have been for the $600. Oh, they have a $200 proposal, which does not meet the needs of America's working families. Secretary Mnuchin on ABC says Democrats should have taken the deal to extend those benefits short term. Let's extend it for one week at the same rate while we negotiate so we don't hurt the American public. What's hurting the American public, says House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn, is letting the $600 lifeline expire. People are trying to put food on the table. People who are unemployed, people who are having their unemployment compensation will supplement it by the 600 bucks. They want to cut it down to 200 On CNN's State of the Union, Representative Clyburn said the cut to 200 shows where Republican priorities lie. At the same time, they want to give uh, 100% tax deductions to business lunches. What kind of priority is that? Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says it's not just the unemployment issue that illustrates the difference in priorities. Renter and homeowner predictions have expired. Those must be renewed. State and local governments are going broke. We need to really deal with that issue. And that's why, say Democrats, they want a complete, comprehensive stimulus bill, not a piecemeal approach. Speaker Pelosi says none of this would have been necessary if the Republicans in the Senate had taken the matter seriously and started negotiations weeks ago, rather than just mere days before the crucial benefits expired. Representative Clyburn tells CNN he agrees. I'm not 
know that it's an honest negotiation. When you want to uh, leave town and not sit around the table and do what needs to be done. While Republicans who control the Senate went home for the weekend, there's no indication when they might coalesce around a deal, either within their own caucus or with House and Senate Democrats. But Treasury Secretary Mnuchin on ABC says he's still working with the Democrats, and he's not giving up. We're going to work every day until we reach a reasonable agreement that's good for the American public. Linda Kenyon, Washington. 7 cars for kids K A R S cards for kids 1877 cards for kids donate your car today 1877 cars for kids K A R S cars for kids 1877 cars for kids donate your car today To learn more about our programs and to donate Go to CarsForKids.com. That's Cars with a K. Pickup is quick and easy. You'll also get a vacation voucher and maximum tax deduction. 1877 Cars for Kids. K-A-R-S Cars for Kids. 1-877-CARS for Kids. Donate your car today. Also accepting boats, motorcycles, RVs, and real estate donations. Jim Roop reports the World Health Organization has created a new advisory board aimed at helping people make better decisions amid the coronavirus pandemic. Behavior. It is part of public health. Every day, we all make decisions that affect our health and the health of those around us in many ways. WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus says especially when it comes to the pandemic and the ever-changing science of a new virus that's only been in the world for about eight months, and the changing science and better understanding on how to protect ourselves, slow the spread, and fight against the virus. There also needs to be, he says, a behavioral science approach to the crisis. Countries have been asking their citizens to understand their risk, to adapt, to engage, to give up to things they value and that define them. Because the understanding of how to live with the virus evolves, it gets confusing for citizens, along with other factors like culture, beliefs, economic factors, and more. Enter the new WHO Technical Advisory Group on Behavioral Insights and Sciences for Health. It's headed by Harvard professor Cass Sunstein. Uh, Health involves behavior, and whether we're speaking of COVID-19 or other non-communicable diseases, human behavior is at the root of it. Along with Professor Sunstein, the group is made up of 22 outside experts from 16 countries. With experience and expertise in psychology, anthropology, neuroscience, health promotion, social marketing, behavioral economics, and more. And the theme is to try to be as empirical as we possibly can about what works and what doesn't. We know that habits are um, persistent, even if they aren't healthy. And we know from a great deal of work that habits can be altered and that can save lives. Other things are already known too in that humans, he says, often focus on today and tomorrow, not so much the future, what's called present bias, which leads to bad habits and unhealthy behavior. And that through behavior strategies, present bias can be overcome. The bottom line of the new advisory board, says Dr. Tedros, is to support our work to offer health advice that's not only stronger, but more effective. This, he says, will enable the WHO to help countries make better decisions so as to better protect people's health. I'm Jim Roop. Two NASA astronauts returned to Earth yesterday afternoon in a retro-style splashdown. Correspondent Clayton Neville reports the landing closed out a historic test flight by Elon Musk's SpaceX company. Astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin arrived back on Earth in their SpaceX Dragon capsule named Endeavor. All good, and we're uh, into section of four decimal... The capsule parachuted into the Gulf of Mexico near Pensacola. It was the first splashdown by U.S. astronauts in 45 years and seen on NASA TV. We have visual confirmation for splashdown. SpaceX copies and concurs. We see splashdown and mains cut. Dragon Endeavor has returned home. 
NASA astronauts and Bob and Doug. On behalf of the SpaceX and NASA teams, welcome back to planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. The landing came less than a day after the astronauts left the International Space Station and two months after blasting off from Florida. The mission historic, marking the first time a commercially built and operated spacecraft carried people to and from orbit. During NASA TV's broadcast, aviation analyst Miles O'Brien said it's the start of a new chapter for NASA. This opens the door to a new kind of economic development in low Earth orbit, which those of us who follow space and, and feel strongly about it have been waiting for for many years. Bob Bankin says he was proud to be a part of the historic mission. There's something special about having that capability to launch and, and bring your own astronauts home. And uh, uh, we went through a lot of years without that capability. And I think we're both super, super proud to have been just a small part of the team that uh, accomplished bringing those space flights back to the Florida coast and bringing that capability back to America. The successful return clears the way for another SpaceX crew launch as early as next month. I'm Clayton Neville. Westwood One Daily News for Monday, August 3rd, 2020. I'm John Trout.